All right. So now we are on part two now to find out, well, what did God say to the congregation? Okay. Because previously we were looking at the good shepherd. That's the title, the good shepherd. And we are focusing on the book of Ezekiel and Ezekiel was getting on the spiritual leaders. Okay. So there were some messages that God was telling Ezekiel to tell the people and in this, in what he was telling them, he was addressing the spiritual leader. So God got on the spiritual leaders about they were held accountable and responsible for their tasks, and they wasn't doing the right thing with their position. But now part two now is focusing on the congregation now. And so it is entitled Wicked Sheep Described and Judge. Not only the leaders were wicked. Okay, not only the leaders. So now we got to talk about the congregation and looking at, well, what were they doing? And God began to get on them. All right. So lest we assume the only people being judged in Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, the 17th through the 19th verse, were those in leadership, we should note that everyone has responsibility to care for each other. Wealth is a blessing that can become a curse if we use it wrongly or mistakenly believe that riches grant us the right to do as we please. God's blessings are meant to be shared, not exploited. So let's look at the passage here. We'll look at the scripture, Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, the 17th through the 19th verse. Okay, and I'm using the NIV version too, and I forgot to mention that, but I do use this, uh, the NIV version a lot, a lot, okay? All right, and it says, as for you, my flock, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will judge between one sheep and another and between rams and goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture? Must you also trample the rest of your pasture with your feet? Is it not enough for you to drink clear water? Must you also muddy the rest with your feet? Must my flock feed on what you have trampled and drink, what you have muddied with your feet? So here God is asking questions, all right? God is talking to the congregation, okay? And he's using water, clear water, and how they have trampled it with muddy water and how nobody else had the opportunity to get the clear water because you done trampled over it and made it muddy. So that is what God here is talking about and getting on the congregation now, all right? And so it says, it says here in the passage, it says, Ezekiel's dedication of Israelite society did not stop with his critique of the rulers and their conduct. He went on to condemn the manner in which the common people were treating one another. God promised to judge, separating the sheep from the goats. Translated literally, the verses states between the rams and the male goats. But the wording is close enough for us to hear the echo of another passage where God is seen judging between sheep and goats. In Matthew, the 25th chapter, the 31st through the 46th verse, Jesus told us that at the end of the age, God will separate the sheep from the goats. He explained that the sheep and goats are differentiated by the way they treated others. He stated in no uncertain terms, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Through Ezekiel, God accused the goats of taking the best of the pastures for themselves. That is, the rich were guilty of hoarding the best farmland, leaving whatever was left over to the poor. The prophet Isaiah levied a similar criticism against the rich of the, his day. What sorrow for you who buy up house after house and field after field until everyone is evicted and live alone in the land. God's heart is for the poor. He takes note of any injustice perpetrated against them. Not only were the rich of Israel grabbing the best land for themselves, they were using the power that came with their superior economic position in ways that were harmful to the poor. Ezekiel cried out, isn't it enough for you to drink clear water for yourselves? 
Must you also muddy the rest with your feet? Why must my flock eat what you have trampled down and drink water you have fouled? Through their greed and lack of care for the welfare of others, the rich in that society had increased the burdens and hardships of the poor. So the rich was making things worse for the poor, hoarding everything, taking over everything. All right. And so here's the question. What practical things can and should believers be doing to meet needs of the less fortunate in their communities? So let's think about what was going on here. Like these people here had the clear water and then they muddied up the rest of the water. So then nobody, the rest of the people ain't had nothing. They had their rich farmland and you can see them getting more and more and more of the rich farmland. Nothing was left for the poor. They're like, dog, there ain't nothing left for us. You know, the poor. So what practical things can and should believers be doing to meet needs of the less fortunate in their communities? We can help them. Um, we can have food banks. We can have clothing drives. We can have a homeless shelter. Um, making sure you know that they have all their basic needs taken care of. Those things like that. Uh, maybe medical supplies if they need that. Uh, or maybe we could do um, something maybe to help them in dealing with the healthcare. Maybe have like different workshops and stuff like that available to educate them on about their health and helping them to get healthier, you know, telling them maybe what type of foods to eat or what type of foods to stay away, um, doing like health workshops. They can do financial workshops, job searches, you know, career fairs and stuff like that to help them. Um, now we're living in the COVID, you know, era, we can do have vaccinations set up for them. You know, and there's a lot of things that we as a people can do, practical things to help the people. And I have seen some people stepping up and doing it. I have seen it and I commend them from doing it. Okay. I, I really love that when I see people doing community service acts. This is something that I would like to see done more so in the school to teach the children about this. Help them start getting on board with doing community things. Don't be so selfish all the time. Don't try to just take stuff and say, well, this is mine, 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 mine. You know, it's okay to help other people or want to help other people. Okay, they're not going to take everything from you. And that's how some people think. But no, that is not the point of it. The point is of helping people, helping people. And so God is getting on the congregation members, those that were able to get a little bit better. Don't forget about the small man over here. Don't step all over him to get what you got and then you forget about everybody else. Don't, don't do that. So God got on the congregation about their actions too as well and how they were mistreating each other and were not helping each other, okay? So wicked sheep described and judged. And that's what God is, is talking about. <clears throat> so the next part of it is entitled... The fat sheep judge, the fat sheep judge, all right? And so we're going to look a little bit further from Ezekiel, the 34 chapter still, the 20th through the 22nd verse. And remember, I'm using the NIV version. And it says, therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you shove with flank and shoulder but in all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away. I will save my flock and, I, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. So here you are, you done got a little bit of money, done got yourself up and then you button heads with everybody else and pushing them out of the way. All right, pushing them out of the way and stepping all over the weak, the poor. All right. And so it's tempting to ignore the needs around us, perhaps even making excuses for our lack of concern. But God knows our hearts and protects the vulnerable. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, the 22nd through the 23rd states, don't rob the poor just because you can or exploit the needy in court. For the Lord is their defender. He will ruin anyone who ruins them. So God is on the poor man's side. 
So you might think you got all this money and you got it all together and you can get anything you want. Mm -mm, not according to God. No, you ain't higher than him. You ain't more supreme than me. Okay. And, and that's the point that God is trying to make with these people here. But then when, if I bless you and put you in a position where you got the resources, you got the money, help the poor. That's all he was asking is just help them. He did not say you got to go and give them out everything that you got. No, he just said help. You in a position where you can help, help them. That's what he is saying. That's all he was saying. But people were being selfish and they were only thinking about themselves. And so I have a discussion question here. It says, what excuses have you heard for not caring for the needy? And how would you respond to those excuses? And I'm pretty sure that y'all have heard some excuses. You know, if, if somebody came up and said, um, can y'all donate um, some money towards, you know, a certain type of fund or project or something, then you can hear people kind of grumbling. Some people ain't gonna say nothing, just sit there and drop some money in, go on about their day, but then some people, I ain't giving them nothing. Okay, so let's look at the passage and let's talk about this question here. <clears throat> In response to the brutal treatment of his sheep, God promised to judge between the fat sheep and the scrawny sheep, between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. Most likely, the fat sheep represented the rich people in Israelite society, while the scrawny sheep represented the poor. So God would hold the rich accountable for their treatment of the poor and weak of society. When we encounter those in need, whether or not we are in a position of spiritual leadership, we have a responsibility to express our love for Jesus by showing compassion toward those for whom he gave himself. We should imitate Christ's heart of compassion by defending those who are vulnerable to exploitation, including but not limited to the unborn, the aged, and infirm, and the disabled. And we should never increase in a system that allows people to be treated as extendable, those who are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. So God says we got a responsibility is to help those in need. So what excuses have you heard for not caring for the needy and how would you respond to those excuses? I jotted down some things as I was um, reading. Some people have said it's their fault that they're poor. I've heard that. I'm not giving them my money, heard that one. They just take it and spend it on themselves. And I've heard they are lazy. Those are some comments and stuff that I've heard people say, okay? And God is saying that's not the type of attitude that we should have. When we're in a position to help, we should help those in need. And so like all of these things that I just listed, was talking about how as a community, what we can do to better the community if you're in a position to help, help them out. If you can help with a food drive, maybe a soup kitchen. I've seen some people do that. I've seen some people do like a Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner or, or just like a Martin Luther King dinner or something like that. They don't ask nobody for nothing. It's just something that they wanted to do from their heart. Like I just want to cook a meal and give it to the homeless. And that's fine. They were in a position to do that. And they wanted to do that from their heart. It wasn't about, oh, well, I want to show off what I can do. No, because you come in with the wrong motive. And then God going to address you for doing it for the wrong motive. So you got to consider that too. But like I said to people, there are people out here who are very generous and they love to help and God blesses them every time when they do it, when they do it from the heart. So if it's something like a food bank that you can help out, maybe just putting stuff in the people's cars, you know, helping them go down to the, the place and organize the food, stock it up, you know, bag it up for the people or, or just starting that, you know, at your church or your community. Okay, you're doing it from your heart helping the people, helping the poor, because you never know that they, that might be you in a situation like that where you don't have any food, a clothing dryer 
there are people out here that don't hardly have any clothing to wear. Okay, and I've seen people do that, have a clothing drop, or either they have it where they sell it at a discounted rate, very, very cheap. Okay, that's fine. They're still helping. Homeless shelters, we see these all the time, and it seems like we still don't even have enough, especially like when we go to the city. We see homeless people all over the place. What can we do to help them? Why are they out there on the street? Why are they living like this? What happened for them to even get in that type of situation? And then lots of times, from my understanding, a lot of them are veterans. A lot of them were in the military. Okay? And we can have like some mental health workshops, mental health available to them to help them to get themselves back together. Because you never know why somebody is homeless and why somebody is living the way that they're living. Why are they out there on the street? So don't be so quick to just to pass judgment on them and say that they lazy or it was their fault because one day that could, that could be you, all right? That could be you. And that's why whenever I do see people like that, I don't never pass judgment on them because I don't know that man or that woman's story. You don't know their story, okay? And if I was to ask some of them their story, probably have me in tears, their story but I can do what I can to help the individual, what I can, the resources that I got to help. And that is something as a society, as a community, as a country, as the government, as a person, as an individual, that is what God is talking about, how we should be helping people and not stepping all over people. Or like in the scripture, it says, butting all the weak sheep with your horns, butting heads with them and pushing them out of the way until you drive them away, looking at the scripture here. Okay, so yes, we can relate to what Ezekiel was saying here of what was going on back then in Jerusalem when they were conquered by the people. So God now done got on the spiritual leaders and now God is getting on the congregation to and looking at where they went wrong at. So now God is telling them what happened and what, what they need to work on. Okay, and so hopefully after God talks to them through Ezekiel that the people finally get themselves together and do what they need to do to help their community, to help their loved ones. Okay, and so here God just want us to mirror what, you know, he is doing, going back to Psalm 23. That's what God want us to strive to be like and to do. Okay. He want us to be able to help people. He bless you. That's what he wants you to do. All right, he wants you to do. And God talks about these scriptures here a lot in the Old Testament about how we need to protect the poor. He talks about it in one um, I wrote down here in the book of Leviticus. In the book of Leviticus, the 19th chapter, the ninth through the 10th verse, I wrote down, it says, when you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings. Do not pick up what fell to the ground, leave it for the poor. Okay, so God does address us in how we need to help the poor throughout the Bible. So here in Leviticus, you can look it up. He also talks about it in Deuteronomy. Um, those were the scriptures that I wrote down um, when he talks about what we need to do and help the poor. Like, for example, another example, it says um, Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter, the 14th through the 15th verse, it says, do not take advantage of the hired work who is poor and needy. Don't take advantage of them, okay? Don't work them to death and then treat them any kind of way and be mean and nasty towards them, no. Because, you know, they deserve to be treated right, to be treated fairly. Okay, just because they're poor, that don't mean they shouldn't be treated fairly. Okay. All right. And so that here is concluding part two with looking at wicked sheep described and judged. And so we looked at not only the leaders were wicked, and we looked at the fat sheep judged, those rich people, those rich Israelites. They were judged and condemned for their actions for mistreating the poor.
All right, now stay tuned for part three, the good shepherd described. So now God is going to give them a model, an example, which is him, of how to treat the poor, how to treat the people. All right, so stay tuned now for part three, good shepherd described. <laughs>